Hazrat. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa afdalu salati wa atamu taslima ala Sayyidil Awalina wal Akhirin. Habibina wa Shafi'ina wa Mawlana Muhammad as Sadiqul Wa'adil Amin. Wa ala alihi al Tayyibin al Tahirin wa Sahbihi al Hadin al Mahdiyin ajma'in. Amma ba'd fa'udu billahi min al Shaytan al Rajim bi fadl bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد بالقلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبصار وضيائها وعلى آله الكرام وابنه الكريم وبارك وسلم صلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا سندي يا جد الحسن والحسين ويا مولانا ومولى الثقلين صلاة وسلاما عليك يا رحمة للعالمين All praise is due to Allah Our creator, our sustainer, cherisher, provider, master of the day of judgment The owner, initiator of everything that exists Peace and blessings and choices, salutations Be upon our master and the master of both worlds Sayyid al-Alameen, Ahmad al-Mujtaba, Muhammad al-Mustafa Arwahuna Fida sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Peace and blessings be upon his noble Ahlul Bayt Particularly the Ahlul Aba And his righteously guided companions Allah is pleased with all of them All those who will follow their path And all those who will follow their path Until the day of Tayama We are present here Once again To remember Shuhadai Karbala to remember the noble family members of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I have become accustomed to at least getting one opportunity to speak in these series of Muharram programs and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept uh, my hazri here tonight and may Allah accept the efforts of those who have coordinated these gatherings. As I entered, a brother met me who was there for my Juma discourse yesterday and he said, Maulana, in your Juma discourse you spoke on a verse that many of us Muridin recite as a wazifa. And uh, will it be possible for you to just give the one hadith, the one line hadith that you gave in your Juma discourse he says, I know it's off your topic, but if you can just share this virtue of this verse with the Muridin and the brothers, it will be a motivation for them. And from there to walking here, uh, a whole lot of thoughts went through my mind and I said, if it's a verse of a Quran, is there not a possible way to link it to Karbala? And then I... <laughs> Because the brother said that it might be off your topic. So I said, if it's going to be off my topic, how can I bring it on my topic? The verse, and because I said this before, and many great ulama have said this also and have given it in their own different opinions, uh, that the fact that Quran and Ahlul Bayt, these are the two things that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left behind. So Quran, I'm leaving behind two things, if you hold on to them firmly, you will never go astray. Kitabullah wa itrati ahli bayti. My Ahlul Bayt and the Quran. So ulama have said that if the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have left these two things, then there has to be a link between the two things. Oh. They have to be linked. So there has to be a link between Quran and Ahlul Bayt. And there has to be a link between Ahlul Bayt and Quran. Why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has left these two things for us together. I'm leaving these two things. So in one discussion, somebody said that, no, you know, this doesn't make sense. How can you say that the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt is linked? Give me an example. So the person said, okay, you give me any verse of the Quran and I'll show you how it's linked to the Ahlul Bayt. 
ulama of the past who had this level of brilliance, you know. So the other person, he said, let me give this person as a, as a, as a demonstration. Would you call it that? As a demonstration. Let me give him a verse that I feel has nothing to do with Karbala. So he says, the verse that I'm going to give you and I want you to link with Karbala is... He says, the verse that I want you to give is, Aqlini Salah. No. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, sta'inu bis sabri wa salah. O you who believe, hold on and seek help from sabr and salah. So the first person says, now what do you want me to do with this? He says, I want you to link it to Karbala. So he says, see, ista'inu bis sabr wa salah. This is Karbala. Ista'inu bis sabr wa salah is Karbala. How, how is this linked? How are you linking this to Imam al Hussein? How are you linking it to Karbala? He says, see, Allah is speaking about two things in this verse. al Hussein in Karbala proved that he was an embodiment of both of these two things. Which two? Sabr, Salah. He says, Imam al Hussein, so we have two things, Sabr, Salah. He says, Imam al Hussein spent his entire life in Sabr, and when he breathed his last, he was in salah. So he says, see, istainu bi sabr and salah. He saw all his family members martyred before him. This was his sabr. And when it was his time to actually consume that, uh, that jam of shahadat, then he was engaged in salah. So likewise, the verse that he asked me to mention is, مَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَا وَيَرْزُخُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ I'm getting Lukma from the half is sitting on my left, not the extreme left, the one before that. <laughs> so, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, first I'll give you the virtue and then I'll tell you. The Prophet the Quran is saying what? Those who fear Allah, Allah will create a path for them. Allah will create a path. People who feel that the meaning is Allah will open a path, this is not what the Quran is saying. If you say you do this and Allah will open the path, it means that there is a path there that's closed. And if you fear Allah, Allah will open a closed path. This is not what Allah is saying. Allah is saying He will create a path. He will initiate a path. He will generate a path. He will create a path that you thought didn't. Yaj'al lahu makhraja. Yaj'al, not yafta. Allah is not saying he will, he will, if you fear Allah, He will open a path. No. If you fear Allah, He will create a path. And the hadith that I made reference to in my talk that He asked me to repeat is narrated from Sayyidina Abu Dharr radiallahu ta'ala an that Sayyidina Abu Zar al-Ghifari radiallahu an said that one day Sayyiduna Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited this verse to me. And after reciting this verse to me, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Abu Zar, O Abu Zar, if people had to know, only if people had to know, that this one verse that I have recited to you, even if all of mankind have to hold on to this one verse, this one verse will be sufficient for the whole of mankind. Now Karbala were people who feared Allah. And the path that Allah created for them was the path of Shahada. Freedom of this oppression and freedom from this calamity. Because there are people who are fearful of Allah. Who is more muttaqi than Imam al Hussein and Ali Akbar and Ali and, 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 and the other Imam Qasim and Sayyidina Abbas Alamdar, the flag bearer? He's not only the flag bearer of Karbala, he was the flag bearer of Islam. Because when people in a battlefield carried the flag, they didn't carry a flag of where they were coming from, they carried the flag of Islam. So Abbas is the flag bearer of Islam in this battle of Karbala. <coughs> All of these people were fearful for Allah. 
they were fearful of Allah. And the makhraj that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened for them, created for them, was the path, the path of salvation, was the path of martyrdom, was the path of shahadat in Allah's path. And what better is the, than the shahadat in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us the faizan of this verse. Now when it comes to my subject matter, every year we deliver discourses on Karbala. So can we say the same things every year? No. Why? Because the first thing you will say is this Malana doesn't do homework. He doesn't do research and he's giving us the same thing over and over. So what we have to do in order to keep up with time, every time Muharram is going to come every year. Rabi Awal is going to come every year. And these things are recurring on an annual basis. So we have to find certain topics and certain themes that are slightly different. Now when it comes to Muharram and series of lectures where I'm going to be lecturing every night for 10 days or every night for 12 days, I tend to choose a theme. By now you would know this. And I stick to this theme and wherever I go, I'm, this is my theme for that Muharram or this is my... So this Muharram, my thoughts are constantly and were constantly surrounding one concept. And that concept was, it's the day of Karbala, it's the 10th of Muharram, it's the day of Ashura, it's 61 AH, the battle of Karbala is taking place, and each one, one by one, have had their turns, they have gone into the battlefield, they have fought, and then they have been martyred. Each one is martyred and it comes back to the camp and then the next one pounces in order to get his turn. And I said just now before I came here, I said to someone that you know how strange it is. Today we have a, we live in a time where when it comes to sacrifices, we run away from our turn. And on the day of Karbala, these were people who were running towards their turn. And each person would come to Imam al Hussein and would say, I've been waiting for long, now it's my turn. And Imam al Hussein would have to convince them and pacify them that your turn has not come yet, it's still so and so, it's still Abbas is there, Qasim is there. Qasim comes and says, now it's my turn, I've been waiting since the morning. And Imam al Hussein says, Qasim, you are my brother's nishani. You are Hassan's nishani. When I think of my brother, I look at you. Now, if I send you in the battlefield, who will I think of when I, who will I look at when I think of my brother? Everyone is coming to Imam al Hussein, trying to convince him that now it's my time. Now it's my turn. Now it's my turn to go. And Imam al Hussein is saying, no, your turn has not come. And then he comes back and he says, has my turn come? Now this is shahadat and giving your life in Allah's path. This is not donating a few hundred rand to a masjid. This is not just getting your turn for niyaz. This is not just getting your turn for your monthly commitment that you've signed up to some organization. This is sacrificing your life in Allah's path. This is leaving your camp, knowing that every person who leaves the camp onto this battlefield leaves as a living being and returns as a shaheed. And I said this and this, you know, people smile about it, but it's the truth. Said, you know, we have turns for certain things. Like we have turns for niyas. We have turns to give masjid, money to the masjid. We have turns to do this. We have turns for... Do and you'd go to people to tell them, but yeah, it's your turn. And you know, people would respond and say, but how can it be my turn? I just gave you the other day. <laughs> you'd allocate turns that this is your turn. This is your turn. He said, but how can it be, it be my turn? It was my turn the other day. My turn again, is it only my turn? Nobody else on the roster? This is how. We, so what do we say? We run away from our turns to sacrifice small things. And these people at Karbala are running towards convincing al Hussein that I guarantee you and I promise you I'm taking a qasam. Now it's my turn, I must go. So my thoughts now. Now what my team, what do I speak on? Now I'm picturizing and visualizing this. They are coming and 
convincing Imam Al Hussein that it's my turn, my turn, my turn. Fine. This passes by. Everybody had their turn, and now it's the last turn, the final turn of Sayyid Shuhada. Nawasa e Rasul. Imam Ali Maqam. The one who is to adorn the Amama of Rasulullah. The one who is to lift in his hand the sword of Zulfiqar. The one who is going to set the greatest, one of the greatest examples for the world to remember. Now it's his turn. All have gone. Now my thoughts got stuck into what? This Hussein, one Hussein, he is linked to several people in several ways that are all present in that camp. Did you get that? He is linked to several people in several ways, family, and all of them are in that one camp. He has wives, his wives are in that camp. He has a sister, his sister is in that camp. He has a son, his son is in that camp. He has a daughter, the daughter is in that camp. Now you're visualizing. He's linked to all these. Okay, we have four. We have, he has a wife to con. Now how does he go about convincing each one of these four that now all have gone, it's my time to bid you farewell. Can you fathom this? Can you visualize? Okay, so now he's going for good, forever. He's going into the battlefield and it's certain. He's going and he's going towards Shahadat. The night before he said it, he said it to the people. He said, look, tomorrow is the battle of Karbala. Whoever fights in that battle is not going to survive. Whoever wants to leave, live now in the darkness of the night. I owe no grudge. He knows that everybody fighting in this battlefield is going to come back as he. Now he is linked to four different people. He has a wife to convince. How? What does he go and say to his wife? How does he bid his farewell? How does he bid his wife farewell? How does he go to his wife Sherban? Or how does he go to his wife Sayyida Rabab and say, "Listen." Your husband is going. Which words does he use? To say that I'm your husband? No. With the husband, I'm going in the last part. How does he convince his son? How does he be, she, she, give alwida to his son Zainul Abidin Ali Ausat Bimare Karbala? And how does he bid farewell to his sister Zainab? The lioness <coughs> who silenced governors like Ibn Ziyad. She silenced Ibn Ziyad and she silenced Yazid as well. We all know that her bravery, after all, she is the daughter of Asadullah al Ghalib. When they went in front of Ibn Ziyad, Ibn Ziyad says, Alhamdulillah illadi. فَضَّحَكُمْ وَقَتَلَكُمْ وَأَكْذَبَ أُحْدُوثَتَكُمْ Praise be to Allah who ruined you. Ibn Ziyad is saying to Zainab. A woman, imagine, she's, she's shaken, traumatized. She's seen her brother being martyred. She's seen her nephews being martyred. She's seen her own two sons, On and Muhammad, being martyred. How did this bidding of farewell takes, take place? This is my, my, my topic. And then the highlight of all. How did this? Zainab brings her two small sons, On and Muhammad. Hussein, give my children a chance. You've given Hassan's children a chance. You've given your own son, Ali Akbar, a chance. Now my little sons, On and Muhammad, when is their turn going to come? Now with which heart does the, does, does the mom who say, Okay, Zainab, send your sons, bring your sons. We send them. Is this some school admission? This is Shahadat in Allah's path. This is this some standing in a line to get some. This is shahadat in Allah's path. <coughs> and then with which heart does now the same? So Ibn Ziyad says, Alhamdulillah illadi faddahakum wa qatalakum. Praise be to Allah who ruined you. Ibn Ziyad is saying to Zainab. Praise be to Allah. Imagine, look at the audacity. Who ruined you? Who killed your family? 
and belied you. So you think Zainab kept quiet? You think Sayyida Zainab remained silent with her, you know, being feminine about the whole thing and petite about, you know, khamosh raho? Sayyida Zainab khadi hoti hai. She stands in the court of Ibn Ziyad in Kufa. She says, what did you say? So he repeats, he says, Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah who ruined you, killed your family and belied you. So Sayyidah Zainab says, Alhamdulillahi alladhi akramana bi Muhammad. Wa tahharana tathira. La kama taqool. Wa innama yafta. He says, the daughter of the line of Allah. She says, praise be to Allah who made us respected by being the children of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he purified us as is the right of being purified. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّدْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ Not as how you speak about us. Indeed, transgressors are the ones who are ruined and will be belied. So how did Imam Hussein bid farewell to this sister of his? How did Imam Hussein bid farewell to his son, Bimare Karbala? And then the last category is my topic. Now my time is up and my topic is starting. And when I came across this last one, a father and his daughter. A father and his daughter. He may have convinced Zainab because Zainab is an adult. She is a lioness. She is the daughter of Asadullah. She is mature enough to understand. She has been programmed. She's been through so much. And they come from that garana where they've motivated each other to such an extent. Sayyidah Zainab understands what trials and tribulations are. Zainul Abidin Ali Ausad understands. The wives understand, adults. But there is a little girl. She is Imam Hussein's daughter. <coughs> Father and daughter, the love of a father and daughter. It's, it's the second generation. One generation prior, it's Muhammad and Fatima. Allah. You have the love of Muhammad and Fatima. Now next generation, same Karana, it's Hussein and Sakina. So my topic is this little daughter of Imam al Hussein. Her name is Sayyida Sakina. I want you to think to yourself, Imam al Hussein, the father is leaving onto the battlefield. How does he convince this little girl that I'm going? How does this little girl Sakina react when she hears that my father is going and he's never going to come back? How does she react? There are many instances and many incidents and many things that can be. She grabs the jubba of Imam al Hussein and she says, Father, Abba. Don't. She is so loved by all in that family that when Sayyidina, Sayyidina Abbas Alamdar Rahmatullah Ali when he goes to fetch water from the Nahre Furat and he comes back, he thinks of the thirst of the little children, especially Sakina. Muje jane do pani bharke ye Abbas kehte the. Mujhe jane do paani bhar ke ye Abbas kehte te Kai din ki piyasi hai Sakina ro rahi hogi Kai din ki piyasi hai Sakina ro rahi hogi And Hazrat Maulana Muhammad Shafi Okarbi Rahmatullah Ali Who many of us are very familiar with When he used to speak on Sayyida Sakina my lecture is very calm today, right? So many brothers will say that, you know, today Maulana didn't do it for us. He wasn't the usual. It's okay. Am I allowed to recite in between? Yeah. Sure. Hazrat Maulana Shafi or Karvi Rahmatullah Ali used to recite these ashar when he used to come to Sayyida Sakina and how she held on to her father. He used to recite these ashar and then he used to begin to weep. And his audience used to weep with him. I want to recite those ashar for you. His legacy will also be remembered. His uh, memory also. 
and those ashar that he used to recite hazrat maulana shafiu karim he is trying to express and explain that manzar imam al husain is leaving to the battlefield and his daughter is holding on to him that father don't go so hazrat maulana used to read this shares baba ko qasam baba ko qasam दे के बुलाती थी सकीना शी इज गिविंग हर फादर कसम वन इज टेकिंग ए कसम वल्ला बिल्ला तल्ला आई एम टेकिंग अ कसम वन इज व्हेन यू गिव समवन ए कसम एंड ही सेज आई एम गिविंग यू कसम डोंट गो आई एम गिविंग यू कसम यू अंडरस्टूड वन इज यू टेक अ कसम वन इज यू गिव समवन तुझको मेरी कसम मत जा तुझको मोहम्मद की कसम मत जा तुझको फातिमा की कसम मत जा तुझको अली की कसम मत जा दिस इज गिविंग समवन तुझको कसम सो वट मौलाना यूज टू से बाबा को कसम दे के बुलाती थी सकीना बाबा को कसम दे के बुलाती थी सकीना रोती हुई पीछे चली आती थी सकीना रोती हुई पीछे चली आती थी सकीना माई फादर डोंट गो आई एम गिविंग यू माई आई एम गिविंग यू माई ग्रैनी फातिमा कसम डोंट गो आई एम गिविंग यू माई दादा अलीज कसम डोंट गो आई एम गिविंग यू माई ग्रेट ग्रैंड फादर कसम मोहम्मद मत जा कसम दे के Baba ko kasam de giving her father kasam and saying don't go and then every time Imam Al Hussein goes on to the battlefield she tears in her eyes she's also running away pulling on his jubba can you relate to the a father goes to leave the daughter at preschool for the first time the child the daughter cries the father has to go back mother has to go back then she holds on then the father has to sit her down and explain to her that this is how it has to be i have to go you have to stay here you have to remain with your family i have to go in allah's path this is how it is and then she understands and then she goes back into the tent and then she comes back crying out then he stops again then he turns around again then he sits her down and explains again then she goes back then he goes back and then she comes back and then she's crying but can't they can't they be any other way this is a daughter a little girl bearing her father farewell रोती हुई पीछे चली आती थी सकीना शी कीप्स कमिंग बैक शी कीप्स कमिंग बैक चिल्लाती थी नाउ शी इज नॉट कमिंग बैक फादर सेड स्टे देयर सो फ्रॉम देयर शी इज शाउटिंग आउट फादर गिव अ इंस्ट्रक्शंस बेटी स्टे देयर विद योर विद योर आंटी स्टे देयर विद जैनब नो मोर रनिंग कैन यू रिलेट टू दिस नो मोर रनिंग बैक ऑन टू द फील्ड स्टे देयर एट द कैंप So she says now my father said I can't come on so from there she screams out chillati thi qurban ho beti chal aao she screams from there but can't I come one more time and then he looks back and then he says okay come one last time chillati thi कुर्बान हो बेटी चले आओ मर जाऊंगी बाबा मुझे तुम छोड़ न जाओ मर जाऊंगी बाबा मुझे तुम छोड़ न जाओ चिल्लाती थी कुर्बान हो बेटी चले आओ मर जाऊंगी बाबा मुझे तुम छोड़ न जाओ कैन वी फाइंड द मोटिव मस्ट हैव बीन लाइक फादर इज अ फादर डॉटर इज अ डॉटर दिस इज हुसैन मुतिमाम मुतकीन नवासे रसूल बट ही हैज अ हार्ट इन हिज चेस्ट दिस इज अ लिटिल गो बैक एंड देन शी रन्स बैक विजुअलाइज 
What, this, what did this family of Rasulullah go through? And today people want to say, why is all the fuss about Karbala? It was a political difference. It was a strife for political power. Look at this. Do they know this, the, the sacrifices of this family? For them to... And then what happens? Then she says, Maranas Ashar. Sadaqay gai, Sadaqay gai, Nanha sa mera dil na dukhao. Don't break the small heart of me. Nanha sa de dil. This is a small girl's heart. If one adult breaks another adult's heart, fine, they're on the same level. If brothers break each other's heart, okay, not good, but perceivable. People of the same age, people of the same category, people of the same age group, people of the same level, fine. But she is saying, I am your little girl. I am a little child and I am not just a little child, I am your little child. And I am not just your little child, I am your little daughter. And I have a soft little small heart in my chest. Are you going to leave making that small heart pain? Sadaqay gai, may I be sacrificed. Sadaqay gai, nanha sa mera dil na dukhao. Betaab hu, mud kar mujhe surat to dikhao. Show me your face. It reaches such a point. It reaches such a point where she came and then he went back to leave her back and then she came back and then he went back and then he comes back and she comes back and then he says, okay, come. They reach a point where she says, now you stay here. And Hussein, he's walking and now he decides that the only way that I'm going to carry on is if I don't look back. Because every time I'm looking back, daughters are weaknesses. That is our weakness. Every time I look back, I end up going back. So Hussein says, Imam al Hussein, Sayyidu Shuhada, he says, the only way now, let me just carry on walking. Oh. And here, Sakina is saying, now he's going, he's not even looking back. Sadaqay gai, nanha sa mera dil na dukhao, betaabu hu. I'm restless already. I can't take it already. I am bechain already. Betaab hu mud kar. Turn around. Betaab hu mud kar mujhe surat to dikhao. Let me see your face one last time. Shah kehte the ma paas raho niklo na ghar se. What was his parting advice? Stay with your mother. Don't leave home unnecessarily. Parde ka ehtimam Adhere to the etiquettes of the household of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sayyidah Sakina when they paraded Now imagine the, 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 the Sakina that loves her father so much This I'm telling you the part of departure This I'm telling you the moment of departure Sakina is crying, Hussein is crying He is convincing her let me go, let me go She's saying don't go, don't go so much of love this daughter has for the father. How do you think the daughter feels that her father's head was mounted to a spear and paraded with while she was part of that caravan from Karbala to Ibn Ziyad's court in Kufa and from there all the way to Damascus to the court of Yazid. Sakina is part of that caravan. Zainab is part of that caravan. The wives of Hussein are part of that caravan. They stopped at time for days to rest, to rest the animals, to take breaks, to have meals. And each time they stopped, every moment, how long do you think every moment was to pass? For every female member of this caravan, knowing that our beloved's head is mounted on the spear, we are part of this caravan and we are traveling with the spear that has on it mounted our father's head. How do you, what, what went through this period? What heart did Allah give them?
अब हशर में होगी मुलाकात पिधर से अब हशर में होगी मुलाकात पिधर से ना यू विल मीट योर फादर इन क्या अब कयामत के दिन मुलाकात होगी पिदर पिदर मीन्स फादर अब पिदर से हशर के रोज मुलाकात कर रिमेंबर दालीमत ऑफ योर फादर रिमेंबर द परदारी ऑफ योर फादर रिमेंबर द लेसन ऑफ योर फादर रिमेंबर द तलकीन ऑफ सबर पेशेंस एंड इंड्योरेंस ऑन योर फादर डोंट ब्रेक डाउन अभी तो शुरुआत है दिस इज ओनली वॉचिंग योर फादर लीव योर कैम्प टू गो एन अटेन शहादत There is still a lot of oppression and a lot of calamities that are going to befall you after Allah. the martyrdom. Your father's head will be paraded in the streets of Kufa. They're going to hit drums celebrating that your father has been martyred. They will mount your father's head onto the spear and walk with it celebrating that we have attained victory by killing Yazid. My daughter Sakina, you still have all of this to see. But don't forget the talimat. Sayyida Sakina was in the caravan as they entered as they entered the bazaar of Damishk there was a person who had an affinity and many scholars have said that he was also a sahabi who came and noticed that the caravan of Ahlul Bayt have entered the bazaar the gullies of the man of Sham Damascus in the court of Yazid so he came to the caravan and he recognized Sayyida Sakina and he came closer and he said sakina the daughter of hussein the granddaughter of ali is this your state what has your condition become and then he sees hussein's head is on the spear and the women folk have been brought here as prisoners with chains on their delicate wrists and feet the scarves have been removed they have been sitting on the bare backs of animal for days they haven't eaten or drinking or drank anything and then she he asked sakina i said sakina there is not much that this person can do in this state but is there any request that you have oh, no. is there any request that you have sakina says oh my uncle this out of respect says my uncle my one request we have entered the marketplace there are lots of maids and men standing around the caravan that i'm in Allah. i'm feeling uncomfortable Allah. please if you can do me a favor ask the men to stand a little bit at a distance because we are women folk of the household of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam our sense of modesty and haya our sense of haya is a bit extra so please if the men can just stand a bit more at a distance i'm feeling a bit agitated and uncomfortable with so many men standing around Allah. This Sakina, this Zainab, part of the caravan from Karbala to Kufa, to what must this journey? What this journey? What must it have been like? How many things did they encounter on the way to Damascus? Sayyida Sakina, beloved daughter of Hussein. Allah knows best. but because it's a khanqa i don't have to you know we we are of the opinion that a person may visualize and even may make ziyara of someone after he has passed on this is our aqida many a times it's possible to make someone ziyara in a dream and we also believe and it has happened and it's proven and it's a common concept and it's a common experience amongst people that they've even at times seen visions of people not in a dream sakina on this journey on this journey they traveling there's a whole sequence in which they have placed the caravans and the cabins imam al husain's head on the spear is right in the front then they have a caravan for this then they have a caravan for the yazidi troops then they have this then they have that now sakina was put into a, a, a cabin that was at, quite a bit at a distance from the head of imam al husain Now each time she makes her way slowly 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 and she tries to get closer to her father's head Allah the face of Ali Muhammad this daughter Sakina and then she comes to the face of Imam Al Hussein that's mounted on the spear and then she touches his cheek like Allah. this Allah she rubs her hand on his face Allah she rubs her hand through his hair that has dust on it my father 
ya abati the yazidi true the yazidi soldier imagine what it must be like you to, you to were trying to convince your father not to go now you traveling with it's a distance it's a distance and now you have your father's head mounted on the spot what what do you do she comes she touches her face father abati my father each time the yazidi troop sees this he reprimands he says go back to your cabin go back to your place what do you want here and in one part in the darkness of the night this yazidi that was part of that campaign or that cabin he keeps on telling sakina go back to your place go back to your place she goes back and then she comes back this like a little bit like this innocent stubbornness she wants to be with her father you took my father away now let me be with at least his he says go back she comes back go back she comes back and one part in the darkness of the night she goes to see the father's face and the yazidi soldier hits her and she falls off the caravan and the caravan is moving so she falls off she falls off in the desert it's the darkness it's very pitch black nobody noticed that sakina fell off and the caravan carries on now sakina fell off the caravan and they went a few maybe some distance and then say that zainab starts to shout sakina she does a head count so and so are you here so and so are you here labbaik so and so are you here so and so are you here labbaik and then she says sakina there's no response sakina where are you aina anti sakina no response sakina where are you so she forces them she says stop my sakina is not here Allah. where is my sakina she checks in all the cabin sakina no way to be found she fell off while the caravan was moving they stop the caravan say that zainab a few other females they go back walking let us go back looking maybe where did she, where did she get left they walk the distance that they covered they walk and as they walking where sakina fell down they see that say that sakina is sitting in the lap of a female that is covered with a veil and that female covered in full niqab nuraniyat is coming from her but she is covered in a niqab her face is not visible and this female is holding sakina and patting her and rubbing her that you know chot lag gayi did you get hurt sakina are you okay have this so they went closer to see who is this lady now that is carrying sakina see that zainab says the veil lifts up see that zainab is shocked she says my mother fatima allah akbar موسیقی They reach the darbar of Yazid. I'm concluding. I know my time is long over. They reach the the darbar of Yazid for an entire day, according to historians. Sakina, Zainab, women folk, they are standing in chains, and they are waiting there in hot, scorching sun. They're standing outside the palace. They've travelled all that way. They're hungry. They're thirsty. They, these are women. These are women. and they standing there they haven't been called yet <laughs> yazid is in his palace ahlul bayt of rasulullah is waiting outside your appointment hasn't come yet they are waiting outside scorching hot the people of damascus are watching this obstacle they are watching this obstacle nobody to ask them whether they want one glass of water so are you you, know, you get what i mean a bit of water nobody to ask them koi pursane hal nahi koi pani puchne wala nahi koi khane ka puchne wala nahi kaun hai ye ghar bare rasool khandane rasool ahle bayt e rasool be ijazat jin ke ghar jibril aate nahi qadr wale jante hain izzo shaan e ahle bayt this is that ahlul bayt they are standing in the streets of damascus nobody to ask them for whether they will have water or 
So the narration says that, but and there's balconies all around. There's only this one balcony in the one of the makats, one of the houses of Damascus. There is one lady standing at that balcony, unknown. Nobody knows who she is. Low profile, per se, not from the family or from the palace or whatever. And this lady sends her servant down to Sayyidah Zainab. She sends her servant down to Sayyidah Zainab. The servant comes with water, some food, some chadars, some scarves, some requirements, some necessities. Sayyidah Zainab takes this, the khadim, the servant brings it, says, my boss has sent it. There is my boss standing there in the Say Sayyidah Zainab is looking at her. Who is this? Who is this lady and why is she being so kind to us? Why is she showing us kindness? Nobody in the streets of Damascus want to know us. This lady is saying, after some time she sent again more things. Then she sent again more things. Curiosity increases in Sayyidah Zainab. After some time Sayyidah Zainab indicates to her and says, come down, I want to have a word with you. The lady comes down from the balcony. When the lady comes down from the balcony, Sayyidah Zainab says to her, Look, lady, we have come here and there is nobody for us. We have come as prisoners. Nobody has even looked at us twice. People are calling us names and insulting us. Who are you and why are you being so kind? So the lady turns around and says, I am originally from Medina. And many, many years ago, I moved from Medina and I relocated here to Damascus. That's fine, no problem. Why are you being kind to us? She says, when I was in Medina, I used to be a servant and used to work as a maid in the house of Fatima Zahra. She says that I used to work for Fatima Zahra. I knew she had little, little children at that time. One's name was Hassan. One's name was Hussein. She's trying to remember. It's a long ago. She says she had a daughter also. Her name was Zainab. She's talking to Zainab now. But she doesn't know who this is. She had a daughter Zainab. And then I worked with her until Sayyidah Fatima made Wisal from the dunya. She says, when my boss, my Malkin, when my Malkin was passing away as a Nukrani, as a servant Khadima, I went and I said, Malkin, you are passing away. Is there any wasiyat you got from me? My Malkin's last wasiyat and advice to me was, in your life, wherever you go, wherever you relocate to, if ever you come across prisoners, if ever you come across prisoners, always show kindness to prisoners. Because you will never know what conditions are and you would never know who you would come across as prisoners. Her wasiya to me was, in your life, whenever you come across prisoners, show kindness to them. She says that my gesture of kindness to you is not because I know you. I don't know who you are. She's saying to say that. I don't know who's the prisoner here. I don't know who's any of you here. But I'm only practicing the wasiyat of Lady Fatima. She said, you see any prisoner, be good to her. That's why I saw you tied in chains. You all seem to be prisoners. That is why I showed this. So Sayyidah Zainab, she begins to weep. Because now obviously she recognized who this lady was that has now turned old. So, and I'm concluding with this, don't worry. It, I just find it difficult sometimes. So Sayyidah Zainab listens to this, she begins to weep. And then she turns around and she says, okay, I'm so thankful for your kindness. I'm so thankful for your generosity. Is there any wish that you have? I can make dua to Allah. Perhaps Allah will grant you your wish. Sayyidah Zainab is saying, in exchange of your kindness, is there any arzu, tamanna, khayish in your heart? 
Maybe I will make dua. Allah may accept my dua. Mm. So the lady turns around and she says, You know, ever since I moved from Medina and I was separated with Fatima and her family, oh, I've always had one arzu, one dua. And the lady is crying. One arzu in my heart from the day I left Medina till this day. Fatima has passed away. I said, Someday. Allah make it possible for me to see at least Fatima's children. If someday I can at least come across Fatima's children. So Sayyidah Zainab says, Allah has accepted this dua in your favor before I have even lifted my hands. Allah has accepted this dua before I have even asked for it. She says, the person you are speaking to is Zainab, daughter of Fatima. And the person whose head you see mounted onto the spear is the little Hussein that you carried when he was little. Allah has made you. This is Fatima, this is Zainab, these are the family members of Rasulullah I don't know, uh, my time is up, I don't know how much further I can go and I apologize if you feel that I didn't meet your standard or the standard of those who spoke before me. But I came to pour my heart out and I think I've done that. May Allah accept our majlis and our gathering.